Today, an update video on our exotic ants. We have a look at our two-year-old Campanotus nicobarensis ant colony and how they have completely overgrown their current ant farm. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome to our first 2021 Ants Vienna video. Before we get started, let me wish everyone a happy, healthy and successful new year. I've taken some time off over the holidays to charge my batteries up again, clear my mind and get ready for an exciting new year here on our Ants Vienna Ant Keeping community. So, if you want to be an active part of it, make sure you are subscribed to our channel with all notifications turned on. I've done a lot of brainstorming and organizing for the upcoming months and videos that I can make for you guys. And I may be able to share some of it with you in a video along our regular content, of course, very soon. Just as a side note, you may also join our Ants Vienna Discord server. There, you will find yourself being part of a rapidly growing ant enthusiast group where we help each other out in colony maintenance tips, being creative by posting our DIY ant farm ideas, identifying the new queen ants we find and much, much more. You will find an invite link in the description under any of my videos. Meanwhile, we're going to talk about our Campanotus nicobarensis colony that you are seeing in the background right now. I had a look at past videos on the channel and saw that we also started 2020 with a video about them. So I thought that giving you guys an update on how this colony is doing after a full year in this setup would be a nice way to start the new year. Now, in that past video, I've talked a lot about experimenting with different types of ant farms until I made the one you see now. They seem pretty comfortable in this formicarium. It consists of an empire of ants outworld and a self-made Ants Vienna Utong ant nest. Given the fact that I was also feeding them more than enough, as you can see in our videos where they go up against that giant spider and snake, where of course many of you guys corrected me on saying that this was actually a legless lizard, this colony has experienced a massive boost in population. So what is actually massive in my eyes? There were around 80 ants when I introduced them to this ant farm, but currently they are ranging between 5 and 600 individuals. The ants fill up all the nesting space. The test tube I've got in there for extra humidity. And even the thermo and hygrometer that was placed in there cannot be taken out now. Apparently, they're using this as a satellite nest. If I take that out, I'll probably have to deal with over 100 ants running free in my living room. The colony is also consuming lots of mealworms every single week. I'm sure you have noticed some of their shells lying around by now. However, what needs to be said is that their favorite nutrition seem to be by far all sorts of fresh fruit. From those, they truly love banana pieces. But the top ant food so far have been red grapes from Greece. Remember the thumbnail of this video? Yes, that was their reaction the first time I fed them grape. The dual watering system of the ant nest I've made did hold up great over time too. With dual watering system I mean two sponges 
and I've been watering the colony once a week and always alternating between these two sponges. This has led to the fact that so far I haven't experienced any mold buildup and the ants always have gradient levels of humidity available within the nest that allow them to choose in which nest partition they want to spend their time depending on the amount of humidity they need at the moment. Of course, with all that population growth and increased food demand, also come cleaning duties for the keeper. As more and more food is served and worker ants pass away naturally, more waste is produced by the colony. Most species of ants are very clean by nature, so they carry all their waste to a single spot in the foraging area, which we also call an outworld. In case of this colony, I have to confront huge piles of dirt if I don't clean their drop-off spots regularly. If you want to make yourself a more precise picture of how that looks in the praxis, you can watch the video I made on the dirty side of ants. There, I show you how I clean up my colonies, what exactly happens if I don't, as well as tips and tricks that will help you in the cleaning process of your own ant colonies. Now, speaking of ant colonies, there is a colony member that you should always have an eye on. A member no colony can afford to lose. It's queen. The queen ant is the most important member, the heart of a colony. She is the only one who can lay fertilized eggs that produce further female worker ants. Contrary to what many people believe, worker ants can and do lay eggs under certain circumstances. However, eggs laid by workers will always result in the birth of winged male ants, also called drones. Since male ants are not suitable for colony duties due to their short lifespans, colonies losing their egg-laying queen will eventually die out. Thankfully for us keepers, there are species that allow the presence of more than one queen in a single nest. Those ant species are called polygenous. Campanotus nicobarensis are such a species, and as you know, my colony here does have or had two queens. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to spot the second queen anywhere lately. Did you happen to see her anywhere in the footage? Hence, I do have two theories regarding the whereabouts of the second queen of this colony. First, she may have moved into the hygrometer satellite nest. Since she was mostly hanging around in the outer parts of the Utong nest beforehand, that could be very much be the case. The second theory I have is the one I wish not to be true. That's the worker ants striking her down, eventually having killed her due to the visible overpopulation in the current setup. Which brings me to my next point, their ant farm. This formicarium has been great for the evolution and growth of our colony and the ultimate result of everything I've spoken with you about until now is that our Campanotus nicobarensis are in urgent need of a new, larger setup. At this point, I want to ask you, my dear viewers and subscribers, what setup do you wish or even recommend for our colony? Shall we do a unique DIY setup for them? Or maybe, just maybe, buy a pre-made unfarm once. I'm sure 
there are at least a few of you watching us that keep Campanatos Nicobaranses themselves. In what setups do you keep your ant colony in? And would you recommend a certain ant shop or product? Let me know in the comments below. I always enjoy reading through your comments and try to answer all of them. And until we figure out the ideal setup for this colony, you can check out the videos that appear on your screen right now.